Jono, how are you doing, man? Yeah, good, dude. Good. Nice to be here, bro. It's been very nice yeah. to meet you. Thank you uh, for making the time. We only met last week, isn't it? Yeah, 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 it? yeah. Last week at... Uh, Pekita. At, yeah, yeah. At Basquiat's thing. Yeah. Yeah, at, the, at the exhibition. Yeah, man. Fantastic, man. Thank yeah. you so much for, for making the time. Of course, dude. It's uh, cool to see a lot of young Zimbabweans doing cool things, you know? That's a, that's a thing that's currently happening right yeah, now. Man. Yeah, like, it's, There's so uh, much momentum and energy. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, and I've been kind of coming... I'm sort of based between here and London. Yeah. And this is like the first time in like sort of 10 years of coming back and forth where there, I don't know, there seems to be much more of an energy. Like a and, yeah, yeah. And a young <laughs> sort of creative vibe, which is, which is really cool. Yeah. It's inspiring yeah. to see, yeah. man. And so um, you're a photographer. Um, fair to say you've been one for over a decade at this point? Yeah. Like yeah, even yeah. professionally? Yeah, professionally for over a decade. I mean, I think my role has changed slightly over a decade. Yeah. I used to see myself very much as like a photographer, full stop. Yeah. And I think what's, now. What's changed now? Uh, I guess the way I take photos and the kind of stories I want to tell, I yeah. think, you know, I'm like, my profession is photojournalism, you know, according yeah. to my degree. Uh, so like, I don't know, sometimes I'm a photojournalist, sometimes I'm a writer, sometimes I'm a storyteller, sometimes I'm a photographer. Yeah. Sometimes I'm all of those. Uh, I don't no know. No boxes. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it, I think it's important to acknowledge that sometimes Sometimes you also need some other elements. You can't just you be can't well. You can't just be one thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, especially in the kind of stories and the work I, I want to tell. Sometimes you can't just be a photographer. Yeah. Sometimes more of the other interesting stuff just kind of uh, works to build on, on the photographs, I guess. Yeah, and, and, and also what I find sometimes is um, just off of trying things, um, you get to discover just how capable you are because before this, before starting Untold, I had, I have actually a, a gaming channel on YouTube, yeah. right? It's been, it's, let's just say it's decommissioned for now <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I'm so busy. Yeah. But that's how I discovered video editing isn't that hard. Yeah. If it wasn't for that, I would not have taken the leap to then do this. Yeah. yeah. So it's, 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 it's those experiences adding up. But one of the things that I'm, I'm so obsessed with when I meet people is, um, like, when do you discover that you love cameras, that you want to tell stories using cameras? Hey, uh, a good question. I mean, that's going back a while. Yeah. To be fair, you know, I always tell people this. I feel like I stumbled onto f photography um, and going back to our kind of, uh, you know, the traditional jobs in Zim. I always yeah. loved writing. Like English was my, my favorite subject. So I guess the, the nat natural trajectory, trajectory of that, uh, yeah. I, I wanted to study law. Uh, <laughs> a, a, and my dad is a lawyer and he was like, bro, you're going to waste your time if you want to be a lawyer in Zim. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he was just very honest. He's like, I, I, I don't think like you want to be a lawyer in Zim. You're going to spend your life, you know, if you move, you're going to have to do a whole, whole bunch of like conversion courses and whatever. Anyway, so I went to Rhodes to study journalism. That sort of, sort of sealed, like, seemed like the natural progression, progression of writing. From English, yeah. 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 And then uh, on my degree at Rhodes, the, the journal degree, essentially when you get to, to second, before you go into third year, you have to like choose a specialization. So like broadcast, design, yeah. uh, radio, whatever. And like none of them really appealed to me except photography. I was like, cool, I I'll try this photography thing out. Uh, yeah, man, and I guess the rest is history. Kind of just, uh, I enjoyed combining writing, my love of writing with photography. With photography. And weirdly, I've always kind of felt like my writing is stronger than my photography, which is why maybe coming back to what I said earlier, I feel like, I'm still not really a photographer. I, I'm more of a combination yeah. of a lot of these things, which I, I, I think like accentuates some of my skills, I guess. Um, so yeah, yeah man. Yeah. So yeah. stumbled ac across it accidentally, and I'm very, very grateful for it because, yeah, man, I can't really see my, my life and Going my in. career and my, <laughs> my vision for the world anywhere else now. Uh, so yeah, man, very blessed. You know, I have a lot of friends who don't really enjoy what they do. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm very lucky to spend time. That's and a common effort. theme. Yeah, that's, yeah, bro. That's the thing that happens. Yeah, uh, I do something which I really love, which is, which is cool, man. I'm very yeah. blessed in that yeah. regard. So um, a tertiary education is, is also interesting because um, you went to Rose, like you mentioned. Yeah. Um, and then after that, you, I don't know if it was after, but yeah. you also went to Uni of uh, Westminster and you did yeah. a master's. Yeah, um, so he, uh, so went to Rhodes, finished my, my journey degree, came back here to Zim, and I worked for like, Newsday had just launched at the time, 
So yeah. I worked for Newsday and, and the sort of umbrella group, they, Alpha, Alpha Media. Media. They own Zim Independent and The Standard. So I yeah, worked yeah. for them as a photojournalist for two years, which was, which was cool, man. You know, a, a lot of my original like photographic heroes are all like, you know, war journalists and things like that. And as a young, naive photojournalist <laughs> in Zimbabwe, yeah. it, it, it felt pretty gung-ho. It felt like I was changing yeah, the world. Yeah, 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 man. Well. <laughs> uh, which was fun, you know, but like after two years, there's certain things obviously in the political situation in Zim that sort of grinds you down a bit. And I was still quite yeah. young and I was like, hey man, you know, I would just quite like <laughs> to go to work and not have to deal with some of these things. Uh, yeah. so, so what do you mean by that? Like, was it too heavy? Not, not even too, I mean, I, I, weirdly, I think I liked the heaviness of it. I know yeah. that sounds weird, but like, it felt quite invigorating and yeah. I liked covering a lot of the political things, especially as like often the solo white guy. Uh, yeah, there's that, it, right? It, it, there was quite an interesting <laughs> dynamic, you know? Uh, so so it, was, it was kind of fun. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the challenge. Yeah. But, you know, there was just, there's a lot of, I guess, self-censorship there's a lot of like harassment oh, like of, politics in yeah. the sense of at work, oh, at work. Yeah, yeah. you work, know not broader politics well that too but you know there's a lot of harassment of journalists <laughs> yeah. and things like yeah. got arrested a few times and then i was just like yeah you know what i'm too fucking young to be dealing with this like, <laughs> like at all what the time cost? yeah yeah exactly you know it stopped becoming fun and i stopped like enjoying taking photographs and i was like but i don't, I don't want to be like and it also started to it started to sour my relationship with zim because i always promised myself like I don't want to be one of those those people living in Zim who's like complaining about everything yeah. and like being cynical about shit because I fucking love Zim. Yeah. So like working in that environment it reached a stage when I'm like, ah, bro, like uh, it's actually like tainting my relationship to my home and to my work. So I left to the UK and then, and then to be honest, I fucked around for a while. Like uh, just aimless. <laughs> well, like, you know, vaguely photography related. I, I did a lot of live music stuff, which okay. was fun. A lot of yeah. like band stuff. I went on tours with bands. Yeah. I was head photographer for like a very cool venue. Uh, but again, that's kind of like a bit more of a younger man's game, live music. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I just felt like that ran its natural progression. And then, yeah, man. And then I decided to go back to do my MA um, at Westminster. And that was kind of, weirdly, I feel like that was the beginning of like my photography career. Yeah, uh, in what way? Uh, I mean, I, I think the, the, the masters really challenged the way that I thought about making images and made me think about the work I wanted to make. Yeah. Like photojournalism is very specific. Working for a newspaper is very specific. You know what the editors are looking for. You can go to something and you take like three frames and you're like, I, I know this is the picture that's going to run. So yeah. like, to be fair, the rest of my time here is probably a waste. I could take a thousand good <laughs> photographs, but I know this is the one that they're going to use. Gonna pick. So I guess you get boxed in in your, your, your mindset, the way you take photos and things. So the MA definitely was like a big rewiring yeah. of my brain and like the way I make images. So, yeah, 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 my process. Uh, so that was, that was, that's probably been the best thing I've ever done for my career was go back to university to, to, to do that MA. Yeah, because that's actually, you, it's great that you said that because that's what, that's what I was going to ask is what, what were you taking from these institutions and, and you've basically yeah. you know, um, answered that, right? Um, yeah, and, and I guess, sorry, just to interrupt you really yeah. quickly there, I guess one of the things that it really, that I really became practiced in doing was a lot more research behind my work. Uh, and even now, like the projects yeah. I do, I spend a lot of time just like researching. I read like heaps of stuff um, before, often before I've even taken like one photograph, yeah. like I, I've done like months of research. So this uh, is what like understanding the location, the subject. Location, subjects, some of the nuances, some of like, you know, the photo photography has got like a bit of a problematic uh, history and reputation, especially in Africa, you know, yeah. like it's a... Uh, it is kind of like, it's a lot about power dynamics. And uh, I think doing research around that really helped me understand a lot of those nuances. And I, I guess we'll probably get to what my work is about, but yeah. dealing with some of these kind of like political colonial issues, you know, they're quite sensitive topics that you need to navigate them pretty pretty carefully <laughs> yeah. at times. So yeah. it's it's good to have a background knowledge and a research of that because I think that really equips you with the tools t to be able to navigate those honestly uh, yeah. and like, yeah. Um, and as, especially for me, that's always been like one of my big goals is that like, uh, I, I really want to have honest relationships with the people I photograph and the work I make because I'm aware of like the problematic history of photography, especially in Africa, yeah. especially as a white dude. 
Like, you know, <laughs> you've got to approach some of these things pre pretty carefully. And yeah, that was important for me. So I do a lot of research about, about that. About whatever you know. you're working on. Yeah. Like um, very deeply. Yeah, uh, you know, I don't want to reinforce any like negative stereotypes of things. Uh, oh yeah, that's you know, that's a thing with with photography. Yeah, yeah, for sure, and it is that's very a, easy. That's a you, big know. Thing. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know, and again, like Zimbabwe is my home. I love it. Um, and, like it's beautiful. Obviously, it's got its own problems, but like I feel like there's so much like beautiful content, stories, history, culture in Zim. Yeah. That like for me, those are way more interesting than. A lot of the political the economic, stuff, yeah, 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 the political yeah. economical stuff, you know. Uh, but again, that's probably also because my 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 practice, my method, my interests, the way I take photographs has also changed. So I think, yeah. you know, some of yeah, that's also that's changed what for informs me. Yeah, how you then approach that? Yeah. So I, I was on your site, um, and and I think this is now closer to really how you're working now because it was saying. Um, that your your photography aims to unpack and confront colonial history mm. whilst offering insights into its continued legacy on contemporary African society with like a particular focus on Zim, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So why did you feel that this was the problem? This was something that was worth tackling? I mean, maybe problem is a strong word. <laughs> strong yeah. word. I mean, it is a problem. It is a problem. <laughs> but I guess... Coming back to the MA, I, I think the one thing that the MA really drilled into me is yeah. that like you need to make work that you're into. If you're not interested and motivated by your own work, how can you expect other people to, to find your Dude, work interesting? Yeah. Uh, and shit, what was the question now? Uh, Deciding <laughs> on, on, on unpacking yeah. and confronting the, so, the colonial So again, you know, like obviously Zim is part of my life. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know if I'll ever live here full time again, but like that's another discussion maybe. But, but <laughs> yeah. you know, I just felt like there were a lot of untouched issues in Zimbabwe. And I think naturally, weirdly, all of my photographic work has kind of been about home and belonging. Yeah. Uh, so I guess the MA sort of honed in my own interests in home, belonging, Zim. Yeah. And then, you know, once I started pulling that thread I'm like, oh shit, you know, this this is this is pretty interesting, you know. Um, and then I kind of, I realized that the center of all that was colonial legacy. Uh, and I don't know, legacy is also a problematic word because I, I realize that legacy sort of often has positive connotations. Yeah. I haven't yeah. quite figured out the correct <laughs> phrase for colonial legacy. There must be another way of phrasing it. But like, yeah, I, obviously colonialism has left, left like some big, some big scars uh, in Zim, in Africa, in the world. Yeah. Uh, and, and maybe specifically in Zim, I just feel like none of those have really ever been like spoken about or dealt with fully. Yeah. Uh, so I really felt like there was a huge niche and a gap in Zimbabwean history, in my own story, in Zimbabwe's story. Uh, you know, and, and I was like, you know, fuck, this is, this is some, this is some stuff I would like to contribute to. Yeah. Uh, whilst also obviously fulfilling my own like photographic desires and needs. Um, so yeah, man, I guess that's kind of become my main, my main motivator. Yeah. Uh, but again, I guess, I think that was all triggered, triggered at my, my MA, yeah, you know, more, uh, yeah. I started to really do a lot more research about Zim, uh, and realize that a lot of my work was essentially fundamentally about home about and about belonging. belonging. Yeah. Uh, and, and the more I researched that, the more I realized that like the work is, is, is kind of about that and about, about colonial about colonial legacy how i've how i've ended up in zimbabwe as as a white dude <laughs> yeah. about my own identity as a white zimbabwean and i guess the first step is acknowledging that like as much as i love being a, a zimbabwean like my own identity is slightly problematic because the only reason i'm zimbabwean is because my grandparents were essentially colonizers you know they came yeah. over here when it was rhodesia yeah. uh so yeah that's that's been that's been a big important acknowledgement and step for me but weirdly, you know, as soon as I've acknowledged that, I'm like, shit, all these doors have opened. Now there's yeah. like so much content. <laughs> there's so many stories here. There's so much like interesting, fascinating shit to deal with yeah. as like a white Zimbabwean, which is about, it can be about me, but it's also about Zimbabwe. It's also about colonialism. It's also about like all these Just big, broader, yeah, about these big global <laughs> issues, you know, yeah, 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 a bigger yeah. conversation, which I've always felt like for a lot of reasons, like we discussed earlier, that Zim really hasn't 
dealt with properly. Yeah, we, uh, we've, we, we, the, we tap dance around it. We, yeah, yeah, there's a big gap in our history uh, for a lot of reasons. But yeah, we don't really talk about, we don't really talk about the R word very much, Rhodesia. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, which is, you know, obviously I understand. I understand why. Yeah, but, it's, but, it's, but, it's but complex it, stuff, isn't it? It's, it's complex stuff. stuff. <laughs> it's complex stuff, but it also, it, it contributes to a lot of issues that like are still like fermenting in Zimbabwe today. To this day. And like they've manifested and continue to manifest in certain ways, which continue to cause problems. And yeah. I, I fundamentally think that like, unless we've start having honest conversations about our history and about... Nothing really yeah, changes. Yeah, nothing is going to change. <laughs> or, you know, it, it might change, but not in the not way... Not at the pace yeah. as well that yeah. we might need it too, right? Mm. <laughs> which is why it's great that, you know, like you've got this, this podcast, uh, yeah. you know, we went to that exhibition the other night and it was cool to see young Zimbabweans taking like yeah. interest. And I don't, I don't mean this to sound patronizing, but it's, it's really fucking inspiring and cool to see young Zimbabweans like taking charge of these things yeah, because for so long, <laughs> they, for so long there has been like, like a vacuum of, yeah. of people in the space, young Zimbabweans. And like, that's the way it's going to change from like young people taking an interest in things and making art and stories and whatever about it so yeah, yeah man yeah. Uh, yeah that 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 is true that you know one of the the biggest reasons i i do this is to change the narrative like you said um the easiest narratives uh when it comes to zim is, is politics and the economy yeah and it's like man just give us a different story yeah yeah, man. yeah. Like, there's more to zim that, than that yeah it's not that those things are not happening yeah but we can't all navigate to that yeah like yeah. There, there's yeah. more than enough of that absolutely and like <laughs> even if even if I stretch my themes out to the biggest extent, colonial legacy, yeah, the problem in Zim economically and politically can all stem right back to that. To that, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you know, yeah. It's, that's yeah, it's an interesting thing. But um, so the the work that you've done over the past maybe four to six years has been um, as documented on on your site is uh, in chapters. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Chapter one, uh, beneath the Bougainvillea. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, yeah. man. <laughs> Bougainvillea, Bougainvillea. Yeah, um, there's a few pronunciations, yeah. but yeah, you know those beautiful, those beautiful plants those on the flowers, side of the road, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, with with that project, what I was getting is, and and I think you you've touched on this to an extent, right? Uh, is 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 belonging, right? But that one feels like there's a particular focus on your childhood. Um, and your family mm. Um, mm. and that can be a difficult thing because like you said um, your work navigates very like awkward and heavy themes yeah yeah and now you get to involve your family yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. what was what was that like just making that uh, that first project uh, hey man good question I mean listen thankfully obviously m my family I'm very lucky to have yeah. like a super supportive family who are, who, who are pretty liberal and, and pretty like, you know, uh, work, <laughs> they're whatever. They're with it. <laughs> yeah, they're with it. They understand these things, uh, which obviously makes, makes, makes a huge difference to my life. Yeah. Um, even though, you know, sometimes I do, I do realize that some of it is hard for them to hear me ask them about or talk yeah. about, uh, you know. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so that first project beneath the Bougainvillea, so that's kind of the beginning, that's kind of the beginning of, of all my work. That's yeah. kind of the foundation, I guess. And going back, that was like the acknowledgement that like my identity is, is, is problematic. <laughs> uh, you know, it's beautiful, but it's, it's beautiful because I love being Zimbabwe, but you know, at the roots of it is, is, a, is a problematic colonial history. Um, so I don't know, man. It, listen, I love photography in all forms. Uh, I, I could look at photographs all day. Yeah. And I'm very lucky also to have had two grandfathers that have like extensive photographic collections of their time yeah. in, in, in Rhodesia and in Zimbabwe. Uh, but yeah, I guess to explain a bit more about that project, I guess I used the symbolism of a seed, um, mm. the seed of my own identity and, and a seed that my grandparents brought over, uh, the seed being a Bougainvillea seed. Yeah. Uh, and, and I really like the kind of the analogy of becoming intertwined with the landscape because uh, obviously Bougainvilliers are not originally from Zimbabwe. They, yeah. were, they, were, they were brought over. Um, I mean, they're not indigenous to the UK either, but I, I came across this story once, which makes perfect sense. You yeah. know, uh, 
the Rhodesian landscape was like, is very brown, monotone, you know, yeah. it's very dry. <laughs> So, lake. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So they, you know, so they planted bougainvilleas to add like some color, which reminded them of home, uh, oh. of, of like the English landscapes, yeah. like the roses and, yeah. and those sort of things. So the bougainvillea was like planted to add like a bit of a bit of color, that to th sense yeah. of, of belonging. Yeah, yeah, yeah in yeah. this new place. Exactly. So, uh, so I've really always like that symbolism has always resonated with me very deeply, and yeah. and the fact that like even jacarandas, you know, you, whatever, all all those sort of things. You just kind of take them for granted now. You just think they're part of the landscape. You, you, you never know? really like consciously think exactly. about it. Exactly. You never really think of where they've come from. I guess same as like, you know, stretch it out. Same as white people in Zimbabwe. We've just, we've kind of be, been accepted that we are from here and we belong here. Yeah. Um, but obviously, originally, none of us are really from here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> There's a tension to that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah there is. Um, so no, I, you know, so I spend a lot of time looking through family albums, uh, uh, I, I guess, yeah, I, I use the Bougainvillea as a, as a, as a metaphor it's for things. Yeah. Uh, and then weirdly, you know, once I sort of acknowledge that metaphor, then you just see it everywhere. Yeah. You know, Bougainvilleas <laughs> in certain places, all the Bougainvillea in the family albums. Uh, yeah, man. So it's a, for me, it's a pretty powerful symbolism yeah. of, of my <clears throat> identity, I guess. So that was chapter one. Um, and, and so that's what I was actually going to ask you, right? Yeah. Because... Born in Africa almost takes that symbolism to yeah to an extreme now. eleven yeah yeah, yeah because yeah. now it's 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 swimming pools man <laughs> yeah a lot of swimming pools mm. <laughs> what's up what's up with the swimming pools why make a project that's almost entirely dedicated hey. to you've got like a book behind you yeah yeah I've got a book I've got a Just book show the people like how big Shit. it is and it's Shit, predominantly I wear my shang it here so yeah. I mean it's pretty big it's I mean and it's uh, predominantly swimming pools and yeah, I don't know how many pages it is, but it's it's a it's a lot of pages uh, so it's predominantly <laughs> swimming pools and sports clubs um, obviously there is some portraiture. In what, things. What, what's the story there, man? So, um, I mean, so the story there, again, I, 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 I use a lot of symbolism in my storytelling because I think that's an easy way for people to, to uh, relate to things, especially yeah. some of the more complex things. Uh, swimming pools. Oh, man. So, I guess at the heyday, in the heyday of Rhodesia, I can't remember the fact. It's somewhere in the book that yeah. I found in, in my research. Like, Rhodesia had, like, one of the highest percentage of, like, swimming pools per, like, capita or something. Um, like in the world? In the world. Uh, Ooh, that's, so, that's a crazy thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, and Rhodesia was very much like advertised as a, a lifestyle, a way of life. You know, it was tennis courts, yeah. it was domestic workers, it that's was swimming pools. That's actually what pools. I was going to say, that our infrastructure actually kind of uh, reflects, reflects that. that yeah, compared totally. to every other uh, state that was colonized. Yeah, yeah. They're I mean, still like lagging behind. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we've got like public pools everywhere. Like swimming was a big part of life. And like weirdly, I think it was, it was almost like the pinnacle of success in Rhodesia at the time was to like have your own swimming pool. Because yeah. it also meant that like, you know, you don't enough money, you had a big enough property, yeah. you had like a gardener to look after your swimming pool. You know, it was a lot of things. <laughs> but like ha owning a swimming pool was like the pinnacle of the Rhodesian dream, if, yeah. if we can call it that. Uh, so I guess I used the symbolism of a swimming pool as like a metaphor for like Rhodesian identity. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I guess... Also, like a much more simpler level, photographing swim, swimming pools also kind of reflects the economic like downfall of, of, yep. of Zimbabwe. Because most of them are just... Yeah, yeah. So a lot of them are derelict <laughs> and a lot of yeah. people can't afford the upkeep and maintenance of swimming pools. So there is that added element of like you can see like the decline of the British Empire and the decline of like the Zimbabwean economy. Yeah. So it's kind of like twofold. Um, so yeah, the book is filled with a lot of swimming pools. Uh, and also, listen, let's be honest, but who doesn't like looking at like the voyeuristic elements of like people's homes with like beautiful swimming pools? Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, so I guess, so there's swimming pools and sports clubs because those, those arenas, those areas, yeah. I guess, were kind of fundamental places where as white Rhodesians, you would reinforce the ideas of what it was to be a white Rhodesian. Yeah. It was to have a swimming pool. It was this outdoor. It was the lifestyle. It was going to play tennis with your friends. So I kind of photographed these places that, in my opinion, were like central to like white Rhodesians understanding of what it was to be white Rhodesian. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, man, that that was swimming pools. That was that was swimming pools. So that was so that's chapter two. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm kind of working my way up to myself, I guess. Um, so Bo but beneath the Bougainvillea is chapter one. And that's essentially about my grandparents. That's yeah, the beginning the of seed, my right? the seed. That's the beginning of my white identity as yeah. a as a Zimbabwean. Um, 
chapter two is very much about my parents, yeah. about how they developed their own understanding of, of what it was to be here, and, and obviously some of my grandparents as well, how they sort of adapted to the way of life. Yeah. Um, and then I guess we'll get to chapter three, which is, which is pretty much, yeah, it's about myself. And I guess if we want to extend the metaphor, it's one big fucking swimming pool, right? Lake Kariba. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> big, big you know. swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's one big body of water. So, um, but yeah, Lake Kariba is, is my favorite place. I, I think it touches on a lot of, I think it touches on a lot of uh, other pretty big themes about yeah. Zimbabwe. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's, so, so the, they still owe him a boat is, is the third chapter. That's the third chapter, right? Third chapter. Um, and that's what, we, that's, we're going to talk about that because um, searching John or ter Terry in, in Google, hey. I get the impression that... Um, I should probably work on those SEOs. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't Googled myself for a while, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, well, we'll definitely be on that first page. <laughs> Sidebar. <laughs> but <laughs> it seems um, they still owe him a, a boat has... Um, taken uh, a life of its own, right? It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's doing pretty... The, is it fair to call it the biggest thing you've done in your career yeah, thus yeah. far? Yeah, totally, totally. Um, totally. It's, it's been doing very well. I mean, yeah. I, listen, I've spent four years on it, which is the longest I've worked on anything. Really. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's nice to have some validation and recognition of, of, of things, even though that's obviously not why I make the work, but it is important as an artist to yeah, sometimes yeah, be it's... acknowledged, validated for some of the work you do. But yeah, totally. They they still own a boat is definitely the sort of like I guess the crown in in my professional career at the moment. That's it, it's, right. It's it's been doing yeah. It's won a few awards. It's been exhibited. I've got a exhibition um, in the beginning of December in London, which is yeah. my first like London show, which is which is very cool. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, man. Thanks, dude. So you know that that's that's, that's that. <laughs> but for sure that's been. But I guess weirdly, it's also been you know this this final pro well not the final project. I'll continue to make work, but I mean. Up to now, it's also like it's been the kind of distillation of chapter one, chapter two. It's been like, you know, me kind of finalizing my own photographic practice and method. Yeah. Uh, so weirdly, it kind of makes sense, you know, well, not weirdly. It makes sense that this is kind of the best work I've ever done, in my, yeah. in my opinion. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, you, it's, you would want it to be like that exactly. as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, you know, it's good to, to, to feel like you're progressing. The progression <laughs> is, is, is almost like linear. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, so no, so it's, it's been nice that, that it's been doing well. Uh, yeah. And, and, and so there's one of, uh, before I actually ask, ask you the question, there's, there's like a very important quote. I don't know if I, if I read it from one of your other interviews or if it's on the website, but um, it was basically you saying that um, Kariba is a magical place, but for who? Yeah. And at what cost was this achieved? And so the question there becomes, you know, what is they still owe him a boat about? And... Did you go into it knowing it would be this? Because like you said, four years of work. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. I, I thought it would have some elements of, of what it is currently about. Yeah. Um, but, but again, like, hey, La Cariba is a, pre a big, pretty big place. And, yeah. it, you know, I kind of went in there with like a very open mind. I had an idea of what I would want some of it to reference or some of it to be about. Yeah. But, you know, you pull a thread and, like, you just go in, like, a thousand different directions. <laughs> and Kariba is also one of those places you meet someone. You get to discover so much. So much. And, you know, you meet someone and he's like, oh, man, my uncle built the dam. We'll go and chat to my uncle. And then he's like, oh, yeah, man, like, you know, go and speak to this guy over there. And then, you know, like, you, you're, going in, <laughs> you're going in, like, a thousand different <laughs> it's directions. It's larger than life. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, which is nice. You know, it, it was very cool in the first two years. I just cast the net as wide as I could. Pun intended. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, took the things I wanted, uh, you know, and then kind of started filtering down some of the things that I wanted to have more of a focus on. And I guess, again, I think that takes time. Uh, yeah. I think that takes like a sort of, it also takes an honest, like uh, an honest approach about what you really want it to be about because yeah. it's very easy to take beautiful photographs of Kriba. You know, it, it's a beautiful place. And, yeah. and that's... Low hanging fruit. <laughs> exactly, for sure. Uh, you know, and I guess for me... I mean, listen, it's been, it's been the most beautiful journey of my life for sure. The last four years has been like super special. Yeah. I've really found myself, I found myself as a photographer. Uh, yeah, man. And, and I guess for me, it became more important in telling the other side of Kariba. And by the other side, I mean like the yeah. less acknowledged, the less documented, 
Uh, and in many ways, the side of Kriba that we've lost in, in the new narrative of, of Lake Kriba, yeah. which is the kind of folklore of the Zambezi Valley, a way of life. Um, uh, Tourism. All of, yeah, yeah, all of these things that we've lost to make way for this, this lake, which obviously yeah. the lake is very beautiful and it's brought tourism benefits and, and hydroelectric benefits for sure. Yeah. But again, like as a white dude going to Zimbabwe, I mean, as a white dude from Zimbabwe, going to Lake Kriba like once a year or whatever with my family, I have a very specific relationship with that place, which, which working on this project, I also went in there acknowledging and knowing that like that relationship is not the same for every Zimbabwean. Yeah. White Zimbabweans have a very different relationship to Lake Kriba than the majority of the population. Yeah. Um, which is for a number of reasons, but you know, it, it was important for me to acknowledge that. And it was important for me to also document another side of Kriba. Because again, like you say, low, flanging, low hanging f fruit. Um, there are a lot of easy stories in Lake Kriba. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but that really wasn't my purpose. My purpose there is to, and again, maybe my purpose has always kind of been to tell stories about Zimbabwe that maybe people don't really know about. Yeah. You know, um, so yeah, man, it, it became really important. It became a journey in itself to kind of find, you know, I've been going to stay with like the original tribes and original villages that got relocated. Yeah. It became as important for me to like try and find some of these remnants of this lost, well, not even lost, it's there, but it's, you know, it's under acknowledged, yeah. under appreciated, yeah. and, and in many ways it's disappearing, you know. Uh, you know, I've met like 90 year old, 90 year old people who were kind of, they remember the Zambezi Valley before the lake, they remember being relocated. Uh, there is like a really important necessity to document some of that before they yeah. disappear and that like lineage of that that time disappears forever uh so yeah it, it's been it's been super cool man it's been yeah. uh, a beautiful <laughs> it's been a bit beautiful journey hard work but like you know really cool worth it and, yeah. and, and so going through um your, your site you know what i was getting just looking at those pictures and fortunately for me i was I was in Kariba uh, earlier this this year. Yeah, it's been a long year, but yeah, earlier yeah. this year, <laughs> I was there, and <clears throat> I think, like you, like you say, um, I had been there before, but as a child, right? Yeah, yeah. And when you go as an adult and you're in the town, and your mind starts to pick up on these things, yeah, right? Yeah. Is I'm here because I have a certain level of privilege. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is it like for the people who live here, right? Yeah. And so what I'll then ask you is, I got the impression that over the last half decade, the four years, um, you've learned a lot about Kariba as you've made this. Yeah. And like you're saying, it's so important to have this knowledge um, just live on right yeah, yeah um so what are some of these things that you because you had like a certain relationship with kariba yeah and now you've learned so much more over the yeah. past four years yeah. um what are some of those things that have maybe just surprised you or just opened your eyes man uh, hey that's a good question i don't know if it's it's necessarily a surprise but yeah. i guess i mean i am also always surprised by like the generosity of like zimbabwean spirit you know like i go there as someone from like a very privileged position, you know, like I stay in, you know, like I, I stay with friends that I've now made there, but like, you know, I, I frequent the, the townships and like I hang out there because it, yeah. you know, I, I want to experience a, another side of Kriba that as a white dude, I've never really experienced. So for the last four years, you know, like I've made some pretty, pretty deep friendships with people from Kariba. Yeah. Um, but I'm, and even in the, you know, in the villages and things, like I'm always like super surprised at like the generosity of Zimbabweans and, and some of them, uh, you know, uh, you know they, they literally treat me like, like a son, even though I'm like this random Morungu dude yeah. that's just pitched up out of nowhere, you know, <laughs> with, with the, some camera gear and I'm like, camera. yeah, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, dudes, I'm keen to tell, I'm keen to tell some of these stories. Yeah. Um, and like, it's very humbling because it, it's been really nice, again, maybe going back all the way to the beginning, there is an element of paranoia in Zimbabwe when you have a camera and, and things. Like there is yep. a, there is like an inert <laughs> paranoia about people. You're like, oh shit, what is this guy doing? Does he work for the BBC or whatever? Like all this stuff, yeah. which I've obviously <laughs> dealt with like over the years. But in Kariba, the last four years, it's been like the most humbling thing that people are like, yeah, man, like I would love to talk about Kariba. I'd love for you to take my photograph. I'd love to introduce you to my grandfather who like was forcibly relocated. Yeah. Like, let's go to the Shabin. Let's have a chat about it. Um, you know, and for me, that's very special. Like, uh, this whole project, you know, like, 
I love Zimbabwe, but working on this project, like, it really Thank drives you. home. It drives home like how profoundly like special the people in Zimbabwe are. Uh, I don't know, man. It's 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 quite hard to explain, but yeah, it's yeah. it's been very moving yeah. and very touching. And like, that's one of the things I, I mentioned it in like one of the interviews you you were quoting. Yeah. Like that for me is going to be the hardest thing I think about finishing this project is like, you know, it's been four years of my life, but also like I've now got four years of friendships and, and things. And like, obviously when this finishes, I'm You're not going to have that same relationship. Frequency. You know, I'm not going to be going back every year for six months to like hang out with dudes in Kriba. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, there is, there will be an element of like finality about it, which is, uh, which is pretty sad. Yeah, that, that can be a hard thing. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> All my friends are having children and like this is my child you know this yeah. this this body of work is my child um so it's uh yeah i'm hoping to finish it end of january is kind of my, my deadline i feel yeah. like there are a few there are a few self-imposed 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 yeah yeah self-imposed um I, i'm going later this month to mola which is one of the original relocated tribes uh to photograph a rain making ceremony which will yeah. be cool yeah um, that sounds fantastic yeah man uh so yeah, there's a few like things that I feel like are maybe missing pieces um, again, which I specifically feel are referencing to to, to some of the original uh, culture of the land, and, and and for me it was was important to like reference that in my work, yeah. um, because again I, I want some of these stories, I want some of this folklore to like live on. It's important for me to like acknowledge that these stories are bigger than myself. Yeah. These stories are part of Zimbabwe. And like, even at a base level, if no one else is going to tell these fucking stories, then then I need to be doing then it. I need to be the one because, telling that. Yeah, 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 because there is a gap, and, and some of these stories are disappearing. So we need to like get them. Yeah. <laughs> fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. And and so the name, man. Um, you told me the, ab ab about the name when we met at Piquita. Yeah, 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 yeah dude. Oh, so the <laughs> name, the name. So fascinating. Yeah, yeah. The name they still owe him a boat. So the name, the name is is a reference to. The Rudd concession. So I, I don't know everyone's sort of historical, yeah. <laughs> his, historical knowledge. But again, this is coming from like the, the fuck ton of research that I spend like doing things. Yeah. Um, so when Cecil John Rhodes uh, duped King Lobangula into signing the Rudd concession, and the Rudd concession essentially handed over mining and land rights to the British South African company, yeah. essentially paved way for the colonization. Exactly. Of, it was of, like the first step. Yeah. The, of present day Zimbabweans. But you know, in in, uh, in this Rudd concession, there was a lot of things that were promised to King Lobangula by Cecil John Rhodes. Yeah. One of the things that was promised to King Lobangula was a boat. Yeah. Um, gunboat? I think Is it was it? a gunboat, yeah. yeah um, I but think so. but uh, anyway, along with a whole bunch of other things, but he never received the boat. So I kind of liked this, you know, obviously the boat, it ties in well with Kariba, but yeah. I really liked this metaphor of like continued colonial legacy. Like there are a lot of unbroken promises. And again, if we want to stretch that to Kariba, you know, there was a lot of forced uh, relocation, relocation and and empty promises yeah. and, and a lot of people that like had their livelihood, their way of life destroyed. And to and some of that, that, yeah, yeah. that and, and some of them and some of them like, you know, some of them don't even have access to the lake anymore. They are located like hundreds of kilometers away from Lake Kariba and 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 uh, life life is pretty hard. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, you know, I guess the it, the reference, the title is in a reference to, I guess, colonial deception and, and sort of broken promises of, yeah. of things. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Man, complex themes, man. Complex, I, dude. Yeah. <laughs> but, man, someone has to do it, man. I love, I love these kind of stories. And, and, oh. and you know, and like, and, and maybe, you know, maybe for me as a, as a white dude, uh, maybe for me, I'm like, you know, that's that's why I need to be telling them because like, I'm someone who's benefited from this. Yeah. So, like, so I was actually going to ask you that is, you know, <laughs> is that reparations for, for you? Yeah, maybe, bro. I don't know. Uh, reparations shit on behalf of my grandparents. I don't know, dude. Um, I don't know. You know, like, or do the people get to decide that? Like, I think, the, I work? mean, again, I think it's, yeah, I, I think it's for other people to decide. Yeah. Fair maybe, enough. yeah, maybe in some ways it is my penance, but, but again, like, Hey, listen, I think I'm a pretty good dude. Yeah. Uh, and like I, I think I'm pretty honest with like my intentions and my motivations yeah. and I can't make that decision for anyone but it's been important for me to like to do the work to do the work and hopefully I will be judged retrospectively on that and and like I say I do I do take I feel like I do take a lot of time and consideration into the work I make yeah because these things are important for me 
and and Yemen. Uh, I think they're important for, without bigging myself up, I think they're important for Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe. Uh, because there is there is limited storytelling on yeah, on these things like or or acknowledgement of things. Information here is just yeah, yeah, it's tough, dude. It's, it's tough, it's, and it's crazy. and it's political, and it's a lot of other things, you know, man. Yeah. So, yeah. And and so. Um, this is December. That's uh, exhibition. January, we we pray that's the launch, right? That's the, well. So that'll be so that'll be finished. That'll be finished project. That'll be well. That'll finished be project. That'll not, be not actually. That'll be finished. That'll be finished. Four years of of image making. Yeah. And what, then I and, and then, then I need to next now. <laughs> and then I need to decide how many image. You know. So the grand plan is obviously for a book. I don't know if yeah. we mentioned that. So the grand plan is to turn the Kriba project into a book. Yeah. I haven't really decided how many images in, in the book. I haven't decided like how much writing is going to be in the book. So there's a few there's a few things I need to figure what out. You need to decide. Uh, there are a few conversations I need to have with publishers and things. Um, but you know that's kind of I guess the fun bit. Uh, I've, yeah. I've sort of done the hard work in many ways. Like is is accumulating all this this There's stuff. The stories, yeah. But now I just need to figure out how the best way to present it. I suppose. Um, yeah. So yeah, that that'll be the next kind of six months after Jan is is putting that together, and then yeah, hopefully, hopefully, before, hopefully this time next year we'll have a book. We'll dude. Have a book. That's the grand plan. Um, yeah, man, I yeah r really do look forward to that. Thanks, just dude. Consuming yeah. that, reading that. Yeah. Th um, thanks, my man. Um, me too, bro. Me too. So hopefully when I come back next year, I'll have I'll have some books to show, which will be yeah. cool. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I see the final manif manifestation of the work. Obviously, I'd like. You know, the, the, an exhibition and things would be cool, but I guess for me there is a nice like finality to like having you know yeah, to, think, to having a book. It's like it's closed now. It's yeah. done. Um, I think even even what you're saying there is even maybe having an exhibition here as well would be. That's that's. I mean, listen. That's that that's would be for me. As well. Yeah, that's that would be. Hey, listen. London's cool, and 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 I guess there's a bit more of like. The market and there's and, an opportunity to and, make like, and networking over there, but for me, money it's as well, right? <laughs> yeah, bro, and you need the money, uh, especially like I've made negative money in the last four years working on this, dude. So, um, but no, you it's important for me. It, it would be it would be pretty fucking cool to have a big exhibition of, of it in Zim. Yeah. And again, you know, like if my goals are to to have some conversations in Zim about it, that for that, me that would be that for me would make sense. Well. Yeah, to have a to have an exhibition here. So, so, so I suppose we need to be on on Kuda's ass about this, isn't it? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a few people that we need to be on the ass about for sure, dude. Um, but yeah, that's that that would be nice. That's the kind of the grand plan is to yeah. eventually bring it home. Yeah. You know, which is cool. It will happen, I think. Uh, yeah, it, I will. Think it will. It will. I I, ha I have every belief that it will. Yeah. Um, you know, and you know, and weirdly, I guess it's it's easier to. It's easier to throw your name about once you've had a bit of success outside of Zim. Yeah, there's you know, that as well. You know, it's easier to approach <laughs> galleries and things here when you're like, you know, yo, dude, this is. This Oddly is... enough, it, it comes with a lot of respect. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, man, that's so fantastic. Um, the last thing I'm going to ask you yeah. about, um, which is um, a bit tied to the work, but not necessarily what we've been touching on specifically, is. And this is something that a lot of uh, creatives, artists, photographers suffer with is uh, imposter syndrome. Hey, shit, dude, yeah. <laughs> and you talked about that, I think, in the most recent interview. Um, you talked about dealing with imposter syndrome. And what goes on there, hey, man? Bro. It's a good question, dude. <laughs> it's a good question, bro. Are you over it now or Listen, I, it I hits think, you in waves? Yeah, I mean, it hits you in waves, dude. I, I think fundamentally... Hey, shit, fundamentally, I'd like to think that it, it won't affect me forever. Yeah. I think it might, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know, dude. I, I, listen, I guess... Listen, one of, I guess one of the pros, and I say this, like, quite lightly, but I think one yeah. of the pros about imposter syndrome is that it keeps you going in many ways. Like, yep. <laughs> for me, it's been, like, a good motivator to not take the foot off the gas. Because exactly. there are times you like you get a little break and you're like, oh shit, maybe maybe this is it. Yeah. And then nothing, and then that fizzle out, nothing's happening. You're like, oh, and then and then, that, and, then and weirdly then it's like self fulfilling because then you're like, oh shit, I am actually an imposter because you know that didn't <laughs> it didn't it didn't kick off from that, dude. So you know it's a it's a weird one. I I mean, listen, some of the validation and recognition definitely goes a long, a long way, way to way. like yeah, you mentioned that before, yeah, right? To dispel some of that uh, for different people, I think I think it 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 manifests in different ways. But for me, at least, 
I think I at least have reached a, a level of comfort with myself and my work. Yeah, you respect the work now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and like I said, like, you know, I, I don't ever start these things thinking, shit, this is going to make me loads of money or it's going to make me famous yeah. or whatever. I think that realism is also quite helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, dude. And I'm like, you know, I, I want to make this because it's important to me and because, like, I, I see the value in creating this just as, as, a, as a storyteller, as a photographer, yeah. as a Zimbabwean. Yeah. I see the value <laughs> in that. Um, you do need the odd carrot dangling. You do need the odd bit of validation. Um, but yeah, man, to be honest, I don't know if that'll ever disappear. Yeah. Um, and I think, like, like you say there, for me, it's, um, it keeps you grounded because you, I think, nine out of ten times, you, you don't, well, I'll speak for myself, I don't want to get to a place where I consciously think I have arrived. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that affects the work. Totally, totally. Uh, you know, and hey, listen, dude, my worst thing is sort of like arrogance, I guess. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm very happy to be underappreciated, but like humble and grounded, for sure. And I'd rather be that than... than and, and, and the moment you, you become yeah. a famous larger-than-life photographer, yeah. it might be hard to like... Yeah, and that changes. Maintain that, right? Yeah, and that, you know, and then, and then weirdly, you know, that also changes your relationship to people. Yeah. And like when you want to make work and things, then maybe you have to deal with other elements that like for now, you know, it's it's quite nice being relatively unknown in things. I can disappear into nowhere in the middle of Kriber and be like. And no yeah, one, but, no one yeah. knows you, right? Yeah, but you I'm just, just like, walk I'm around just taking and just photographs. Live, live your life. Yeah, dude. Yeah, um, there's, there's like a, there's a piece that comes with that. I was talking to uh, K Chaps, the singer. Yeah. And we were talking about just navigating that because he worked for so long and he wasn't successful. And you're like, damn, why am I not successful? Yeah, yeah. And because with, with singing, success generally nine out of 10 times means fame. Yes, yeah, and, yeah for sure. In different, and, yeah. <laughs> and whereas photography, like what is, what is like, what is, how do you define being a successful photographer? I don't know. You could be like extremely famous and, and, and no one knows you, especially yeah. in the context of Zim where, you know, like um, these cultural things they kind of allow you to go under the radar a bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and he was talking about where he made a um, hit song, a popular song, right? Uh, changed his life essentially overnight. The same 24 hours, yeah. my life was drastically different. Um, but that came with like a shitload of problems yeah. that I just had never anticipated yeah. because I was working towards that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, like some people might also like want that. They might crave yeah. that and they might desire that sort of that sort of and stuff, they, which is fine. And there are people who are actually good with that. Yeah, yeah, there are exactly. There people who you see them and you're like, yeah, that's a superstar. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. It makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas I think I've also, you know, I think I've reached a stage when I'm like, yeah, like imposter syndrome is a thing. It, it, it might always be there, but like, you know, just be aware of it. Like, yeah. you're probably not as shit as you think you are, yeah. but like, you, you know. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, from part of that, I guess, something that's related to that that I hadn't thought of is writer's blog, creative blogs. Yeah. Hey, How yeah. do you navigate that? Well, listen, I, I guess I'm also very lucky because, because I spent like six months here and six months in London. Yeah. I, I've always felt like that... Like both of those places stimulate me in different it ways. Give you different things. It give me different things. So like I come back here and like I have like a million ideas of of, of like things I want to photograph, stories, projects, yeah. whatever. Might not be accessible to do that here for a number of reasons. And then you know then I go back to London with like yeah. the network <clears throat> and the contacts and and all that stuff. And I'm like cool. So I think having weirdly having like the balance between two places, I've never really felt particularly like I struggle. Of, yeah, for ideas yeah. and things like both yeah. places stimulate me very differently. Uh, which is which is quite nice, and 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 interesting. You you mentioned there just being exposed to two places. Um, what would you take to London from Zim in terms of just your career, right? What what elements would you take from here that you think would make sense there, and vice versa? What would you take from London and bring it back home, work wise? It, it work wise, yeah. Hey, I don't know. Listen, I I think Zim Zim really teaches like in terms of being like a human being like Zimbabwean people are like amazing yeah friendly like helpful like graft hard like I don't know I think I think like Zimbabweans can adapt anywhere yeah. I think that is a life skill that we underappreciate and like I think that's something that like you take to London and people are like fuck wow bro like does this just come naturally to you whatever even oh, yeah it, because <laughs> in, you know even if it's things like you know manners or being polite or like the way you interact with people like I think Zimbabweans are really good at that 
Yeah. A, a, and like that is like a very good skill set that like opens a lot of doors. Yeah. Even subconsciously that you don't even think about or, or don't realize. Yeah. Like you just have it. You just have it's it just from like exactly from like from from being in Zim. So like weirdly, I think that's that's something I always take from Zim. Yeah. Is like my upbringing and and, and things that have been like reinforced from growing up in Zim. And, yeah. and I do, I do think that gives you a pretty like good outlook on life, and a good approach to life. Yeah. Um, and, and what would you bring back from there? Shit, I don't know, dude. Ideas. Ideas, I mean, I, I take a lot of ideas from here, but I just mean in terms of ideas about like access, networks, I, I guess more of the bigger cultural things, yeah. you know, like museums, exhibitions, those sort of things that like I, I try and like immerse myself over there in because I do think that that element is sort of missing from them a bit. Yeah. That it, it's kind yeah. of limiting. Uh, and, and, you know, like I guess, in Zim, I mean, weirdly, I've never really felt like I've had a creative, uh, like, community, even, yeah. in, even in London. Uh, yeah. I'm getting there, like, I, you know, I've started to have, like, more photographic friends or whatever, yeah. but, like, I've never really felt like I've had a, a bubble of, of, of people that, like, I can talk to about things um, on a level. Yeah. Um, and that's why I was saying it was so cool the other night at, at the gallery, because it was like, it's, this is the first time where it, it seemed like so there's... so packed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, which is cool. So, I don't know, what... what there are a lot of ideas from London that, like, it would be really cool to see implemented see here in, yeah. in terms of, like, yeah, arts, culture, funding, uh, yeah. progression in, in, that sort of, in that sort of avenue. Um, yeah, man. A, a, and like we were talking about earlier, education and, a, and like, Ooh, yeah. more of, like, Ooh, an education a, a big, and, like, immersion in, in, like, culture from, like, a young age in Zimbabwe. Yeah. I, I feel like that is a big gap. Like, like you said, you, you know, we have very get. traditional, like, job avenues and things. And, and like, I, 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 yeah, the creativity side of things is, is, is sort of not mm. as big or not really emphasized not, not enough. explored. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Not so, even. yeah, you know, and, and I guess that's coming down to, like, a whole bunch of things. But, you know, I, I guess in, in a lot of ways, Haifa used to plug some of those gaps. Yeah. Now, Haifa is not really a thing. You know, I used to work for Haifa, and that was, like, a... For me, oh, that, that, that was like one of my my like best immersions, most important like foundational immersions in like African fucking culture, yeah. and like yeah. it, it was like it was it like opened my eyes to so many things. Haifa, I can't sing Haifa's praise enough. Yeah. Like, and it's really sad that they're not around, dude. But uh, yeah. yeah, you know, but things like that are like super important for like all of us. Yeah, and yeah, they stimulate us in a in a different way, right? Yeah, man. Like, um, just so forced to think about things. <laughs> forced to think about things, man. And, <clears throat> you know, and I think we have been deprived of some of that in, in the later years, you know? Yeah. Fucking yeah. big global superstars coming to, like, perform, like, songs, concerts, theater, all that stuff. And, and, you know? and COVID as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was the cherry on top of all exactly. of that. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there, there are elements of that where you can see how important, like, the arts is yeah. for, like, society. Yeah. Like, that is that is really, like evident in a place like london and and yeah i would like to see a bit more uptake on on that in zim so mm, that was like yeah, one thing that yeah. if i ever move back to zim i would like to get involved i suppose in a more ground roots way. sort of ground roots way of like yeah like exposure to arts and culture and the, and the importance of like yeah man immersing yourself in, in mm, some of that, of that yeah. yeah um Thank anyway, you so dude. much, man. This is this has been fantastic. Hey, thanks uh, for having me, dude. It's been a real pleasure, dude. And I appreciate you getting me out, Shabra. <laughs> <laughs> Had to do it, man. I I think we knew. Yeah, we knew, bro. Pretty, pretty quickly, dude. Yeah. We had to do this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, a, and a big shout out to our mutual connection, Kuda. <laughs> Kuda. The big basket. Guy, yeah, man. man. Um, Great, dude. He moves at a phenomenal speed, dude. 400k hey, per bro. hour, man. Like, <laughs> He calls me whenever he calls me. I know something crazy something's, yeah, is, something's about happening. To, is about to happen, right? <laughs> yeah. So shout out to him. Um, thank you so much. Like I said before, all the best with the exhibition in Thanks, yeah. in, in December, London. Yeah. Uh, all the best with rounding this up into a book. Thanks, dude. Um, yeah. And then in terms of your work, like, where can people find it, get it, buy it, all of this? Yeah, I mean, Plugs so, of that stuff. all of that stuff. I mean, my, I mean, my Instagram is probably the best. 
I mean, my website works. My website's yeah. got a lot of lot, lot of good shit. Uh, lot of good we'll shit. put a link to that in the yeah. description. So, yeah. website and your is, Instagram as well. All right. Yeah, yeah. sweet. I mean, yeah. so I don't really need to plug that. There'll yeah, be, just, just give me all the links. Yeah, yeah. Just send all me right, whatever man. links you need me to plug and we'll do okay. that. Okay, all right. We'll do dude. that in the description. So, yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> Instagram and, and website. Um, like, I'm not really... I'm not really doing prints at the moment. Yeah. Like, it, it, prints are complicated, especially getting them out to Zim, I guess. Um, <laughs> I, what, I, like I, the shipping or what? The shipping, yeah. Ship, shipping to Zim is, is, a, is a bit of a mission. Like, yeah. I'm trying to get better at that now. Um, and weirdly, weirdly, um, as part of this e exhibition that I'm having in London, like, I'm represented by a gallery now, which is obviously really cool. But, yeah. you know, uh, it, it makes selling prints a lot more of like a formal uh, business transactional <laughs> thing. Um, but okay. no, I, I'm always willing to like accommodate um, people, prints, and, and I'll try and make a plan if I'm bringing them in suitcases or whatever. Like, whatever, like so if, if it can get done. Yeah, get so done. if anyone wants prints and things, uh, I, I will do my best to accommodate them for sure um, yeah. and, and make sure that they're like affordable and accessible. And I'm always like super humbled when people want some of my stuff hanging on their wall. So yeah, uh, yeah. yeah man. Um, so hit me up if you want one, um, and I'll try and make it happen. Yeah. Thank um, you so much, John. Sure, dude. Thanks. Thanks for having fantastic. me, my man. Yeah. Cheers, bro.